So basically, your opinions on the movie Avatar are evil. I wouldn't go that far. Not at all. It's just, well, I don't like the movie that much, first off. <laughs> but more importantly, to your particular statement there, is that I think that realistically that should not have gone that way. Like a bunch of tribal people beating off a highly technologically superior force due to the aid of some kind of magic white man powers. Like, when we look at the Native Americans, you know, the analogy they were sort of clubbing us with the whole movie, um, we see what really happens in those circumstances like in history which is that highly technologically superior force comes against primitive force that possesses a resource they desire. Technologically superior force uses any means necessary to take it. Granted, but you understand this is wrong, and especially once a oh, yes. society reaches especially such a high technological level that it can actually travel to this other planet, so on and so forth, that they should be better than doing that same shit that they did centuries the fuck ago, goddammit. Yes, I agree. They should be better. Like, and if a society reaches a sort of moral, uh, if you will, evolution, as well as technological, yeah. then you would have a case where they, they'll they choose the different option. I mean, yeah, However, well, you see, but if you look at the society portrayed in the movie, it's like exactly the fucking same. So yes, that's why I say what ha should have happened there was a destruction. But granted, a society should try to evolve morally to a point where such an act would be seen as unthinkable and reprehensible and would never happen. However, the society portrayed in the movie had no such qualities. In fact, the, the thing was they were already there to kill them all and take their stuff. So that tells you where the society was. Okay, but the thing is is that the them fighting off the humans, I mean, if you look at the planet as an overall organism because that's how it's set up in the movie, um, it's just like an organism repelling a virus. Except this organism was too weak to repel the virus without the introduction of new genetics, if you will, to follow your analogy. Uh, uh, or antibodies. Yes, was, new yeah. antibodies. Mm -hmm. Foreigner saves these ignorant, backwards people. Without him... Yeah, well, if you remove him from the equation, it's the sad story of an inferior people being wiped out by greedy humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, you know, again, you can make the argument that an advanced enough society could, you know, fight off such a thing, and that that alone doesn't rule them out. The problem is, though, it's complete fucking happenstance is what saved them. What if he had just died instead of becoming a cripple, to use the old school term? Or, what if the guy just didn't fall in love with What's-Her-Face and was like, man, fuck these cat blue people? Well, the thing is, is that... Um, the whole final, like, help from Awa with all the animals destroying all the ships and whatnot and kind of turning the tide of the battle was all because Magical White Man decided to pray to Awa because he had knowledge of how humans had killed their mother because Earth was in, like, and it was destroyed. Again, happenstance safe. Yeah, that's it. So apparently the planet wasn't even going to fight for them until the White Man asked real nice. And it, the image of the uh, terms from the movie juxtaposed over the Disney Pocahontas story. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where it was just like, I get the point. Like, I do. That, you know, it's an illustration of how humanity's lost touch with its natural roots and how, like, there are alternate ways you could live and all of that, more in tune with nature and everything. But... Living in balance in a sustainable is, way for the planet. The thing is we aren't there and we don't have right now the capacity i think as a full society to move there yet we don't have the mindset for it okay because specifically you said that because i was about to say we have the excuse me we have the ability at least to feed i think 11 billion people it's just that we don't allocate the resources yes. but it's you're right because it's not something that we're going to do Despite the fact that we can't, that's the... And so one day we might reach an evolutionary point where that isn't part of our story anymore, but that won't be for a long time. And I think more accurately, if you want to take a lesson from the movie, it would be how technology in the hands of 
an unevolved humanity will just lead to further tragedy. <laughs> Which, you know, if you take the long-term view of the struggles of the Na'vi and all of that, right, where mm. that was really just one campaign in a war. That was one strike against their planet. Now, if unobtainium <laughs> is, you know, it's unobtainable, thus the name, except, you know, it actually exists and you can go get it, so it should be hard to obtain you. <laughs> but... You know, or difficultium. I don't know. <laughs> but unobtainium gives you this false impression that it's unobtainable. But, you know, that aside, uh, it's worth, like, whatever you said. Uh, because this little gray rock sells for 20 million a kilo. That's the only reason. It's what pays for your science. And so, it's that good. It's that valuable. Now, that particular company might have gone under. Sure, you know, maybe the invasion was so catastrophic to them that they sunk. Well, they were just using the military as their, like, you know, security. So, why not just send more? Yeah. That was, like, you know, not as the whole army, obviously. They've got more. And there's more corporate people. It's not like other people have just uh, forgotten all of a sudden that Unobtainium and Pandora exist. So, more people are coming. And sure, the planet might be all like, oh, we're going to defend ourselves now and blah, blah, blah. But, you know what a very old tactic compared, you know, to the timeline of the movie, that's still very viable today is the carpet bombing. <laughs> I mean, like, let's Vietnam? say, let's say really, really, really want that on Unobtainium, right? And you pretty much have it's what It's just appears, in the ground. Like, you pretty much have what appears to be an open license on these people to kill them and destroy their stuff to take the shit, right? They, they just use flamethrowers on the trees. Just So, yeah, just, okay, we're in orbit, right? Yeah. Got ships. Bomb, 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 until that gray rock glows in space, like. <laughs> and then go, guess what? Go mine that shit. There's no one to stop you. There's nothing to get in the way. You vaporized it all. It's dead. And you, I didn't see anything they could do about that. All them wild animals and their dragon things, and they can't go into space. <laughs> you, <laughs> and it also offended you as a... Uh, as a scientist, the evolution aspect of it, because they had kind of reached a lull and just... Yes. Well, it seemed like their society had reached a complete point where, by living in balance with everything, they had sort of effectively achieved an apex civilization, wherein they had no real challenges. There were no needs to adapt to because, well, they had figured it all out. They didn't have gross evolutionary pressures. There were no gross evolutionary pressures. And sure, the organism as a whole, speaking of their society and the planet and all that interlinked shit, would have evolved slowly over time eventually. But they had sort of reached a apex point where that by forsaking technological evolution and by completing more or less biological evolution, they were stagnant, it seemed. They were in a cycle that was self-sustaining, yet never growing. Mm -hmm. And such a society, as you know, evolution shows in our world right here and now, when an organism reaches a lull point in evolution, where it basically has reached a complete point, when a new change is introduced into the environment, they can rarely compete. But they adapted to the situation. The point is they wouldn't be able to adapt to bomb. Or they wouldn't be able to adapt to even the initial invasion without outside help. Magical white man. Yes, their evolution, in a sense, if you wish, was spurred by another outside force, which at that point is chance. Like, they were saved by percentage chance. That everything went line up where this particular guy with these particular skill sets would reach this particular point where he was the one put in the body so he could have these particular events happen. Like It's convoluted. It's very convoluted. And now, to make a note here, I'm not going to say it's the worst movie ever or like it's garbage or anything. It's a well-produced movie in see, the, the thing normal is, sense. Yeah. See, I'm aesthetically uh, inclined and I like it because, god damn it, it's fucking pretty. I'm sorry, but it just is. It, it is. It's a good and it's paced well. It's a good film. The, the issue you have is that it's so unoriginal. Yes, there's that too, where it's pretty much like watching a hundred other stories, namely Pocahontas being like the sort of literal adaptation, if you will, Pocahontas in space. Even Ferngully, if you've seen that one, 
same type of tropes and also there's like a perfect juxtaposition between the two of in Fern Gully where they're skipping on the water with the colored ripples and then in Avatar they have the same damn thing with the grass it's just they're almost frame for frame for fuck's sake it's well, just so many different little things picked from and like I'm not gonna sit there and say all movies have to be completely original and blah 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 because well you know most ideas have already been done. That's the thing. Is However, that when, when, when I look it's at so that, so literally copied from other sources without like much of a spark of originality. Short of they played Mad Libs with the setting. Well, but that's the thing though is that those kinds of thing, those juxtapositions are things that actually endear it to me personally. Because I like all of these things being mashed together into this, and I actually just like the film in general. For me, personally, it's one of my favorites. For me, I think I wanted a, a twist somewhere. Like, something out of the ordinary for that story. Like well, Because you're very story-oriented. Yes. I think I, the whole time, was expecting the story to do something different. To give this same old retold story a hundred times some life. A new twist. Instead of... Following Same the formula right to the end. Shit. Like, from start to finish, they followed the formula. and It's not the worst approach. I mean, like, it made a decent movie. It sold a lot. And it was commercially a brilliant success. All of that given. But it's just not the kind of movie I like. In that it's, honestly, not very cerebral. Like, it's not a very thought-provoking movie. Granted. It's not very original in what they do do with the story and where they take it yeah it's a graphics fest and, and the thing is that's one of the reasons i like it and um that and the fact that it just kind of appeals to my sensibilities with the whole naturalistic uh ear like you're getting fucked in the ear with this message the whole fucking movie yeah which I get it. You know, it's like, you, I get it. You want to t okay. take a movie aside and be like, dude, I get you. I uh, hear okay, you. Okay, like, but... she, she's drinking water out of the leaf. We, we get it. Okay. But the thing is, like, we as a people have chosen a different route. We, it's just, there's, there was more or less, sort of, if you will, a set of paths, you know, put before human evolution at some point. Mm -hmm. Wherein... We could live as people with sentiency, but on a more primitive level, where we were one with the environment, moving with the herds and gathering. And I can't even say exactly what that would have done to us. I mean, who could really speculate? But it might end up something like that movie. I mean, I think that the messages are good of just, like, simple ideas like, say, sustainability with the planet. It's the only place we have to fucking live. Oh, and that's, that's, that's one thing. I will not disagree with the movie's messages. They might club you with them, <laughs> but they're not bad messages. Okay. Like, you know, the general ideas, as sort of tropish and hacked as they are, of live better with the environment and take care of your planet and all that, they're good messages. So, it's wrapped pretty, and the messages are good. It's just how the it's... The meat. Yeah. The meat is not good for me. Like, mm -hmm. it's... One, of course, you know, it's cliché to all the way through. Granted. Wherein, like, you can literally call as you're watching the movie what's, what's going to happen, happen next. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, this is the dark point. He's not sure of his destiny anymore. and They're rejecting him because of his strangeness, and he's conflicted. Now, this is the moment where the helpful something is going to show up in order to guide him on the right path. And then, boom. And then, okay, this but, is the uh, point dude, where he reachieves his greatness with these people, and he shows how he is the true one here, and then he is going to be the one to lead the people because of some great revelation of some kind against an oppressor. <laughs> dude, it... The movie literally clubs you with the fact that he's the magical white man when it has all the seeds land on him. Yes. It just... It's... Okay, this guy... Magical Jesus dude. Okay, and now we know. In a way, it's almost a Jesus allegory, too. Every movie like that can't escape, almost in a sense, being a sort of messiah allegory. Simply because... It can be rationalized that way easily. Well, in every case, like, you have somebody here more or less suffering for the sins of his people, having to go through trials and tribulations in order to save a foreign group of people, right? He's their savior. Guy rides in on the giant, you know, dragon, whatnot, banshee, whatever. And they all go through some sort of allegorical or metaphorical death, a dark point where they must rise up from it. 
And in his case, he's literally reborn. On certain levels, when I look at it, it's just like, really, movie? Like, come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you do something for me? I just... I just love the whole fucking thing. Start although, to fucking finish. It, it has me for all <coughs> three hours. Although there is one thing great that came out of that movie. Pandora Syndrome. Uh, the phenomenon where people who watched that movie fell so much in love with the alternate world of Pandora that they felt depressed when the movie was over because they're in this world. I know. And like, my first thoughts were like, about time y'all saw how that was. It's like being a fantasy person who watched anime and cartoons and played video games. It was like, I felt that all the time. Like, I'm done with the game. Oh, right, I'm still here. This place. Like, fuck. And it's like... People who escape through fantasy long have known about this phenomenon. It just took a movie like Pandora to introduce the regular people. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, yeah, now you've seen the beauty of an imaginary setting that caters to everything you want. Now understand how it feels to come back here. <laughs> to you fuckers. Yep. Overall, not the worst movie or anything. Just, it left me unsatisfied. It, seriously, Pocahontas. And it was Pocahontas in space. I cannot escape that point in my own head when I see it. It's just like, uh, I already know this movie. I already saw it. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? <laughs> Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? <laughs>